Hello everyone and welcome to the practical applications of StyleMaker 5.2. In the last lesson we did in class we went over the um, the theory lesson that goes along with StyleMaker 5.2 which we went over all the menus and what each one contained. There's a lot of stuff going on here. It's got a few more hidden secrets than the old StyleMaker 5.1. Now the first thing you're going to notice full body mannequins. Thanks Chaz. Okay but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start creating something new. First thing we're going to go to is file and new. It's going to open up the new outfit wizard and it says this wizard will guide you through configuring a new outfit and to continue click next. Okay the first thing it's going to do is ask you to pick a gender. For this example I'm going to pick male because you know I don't do, do enough guy stuff. Okay so next and then it asks for hairstyle. What's the hairstyle configuration we want to give him? Do we want to make him a baseball cap, a beanie, a busta hairstyle, a crusher hat, a backwards cap, a fedora hat? What do we want to make him? Well since the fedora hat is new in StyleMaker 5.2 let's go ahead and make one of those and of course we have uh, two texture sizes. We can go small with 128 by 128 which would be low resolution and then 256 by 256 which would be high resolution. If you're using a lot of details pick high resolution. If you're not go with low resolution um, and then we go ahead and click next. Next up is the male glasses configuration. What kind of glasses do we want to put on him? Do we want to put groovy glasses, neo glasses, nerdy glasses? What do we want him to look like? Do we even want to make a pair of glasses that go with this? Well, let's pick a pair of neo glasses since guys seem to be a little crazy about that one. And you can already see our model is already starting to take shape. And of course, you can only design glasses in 128 by 64. We click next. Now, for his head and you're going to notice all the pieces are snapping on to the model. For his head we can choose none and his head will disappear of course. <laughs> so if you don't want to do that go back <laughs> click on standard and of course if you want to browse you can always browse for a, a texture file. Okay. So but in this case we're not going to do that. So we hit cancel and then we go ahead and click next. And what Browse does is actually let you look for a texture maybe that you've already created. Okay, for the male top, we can give it parameters. In this case, let's go ahead and give him a uh, casual jacket. Why not? Goes with the hat. And then next up after that is our male bottoms. What do we want to give him? Bell bottoms, bikini bottoms, boxer shorts, chaps. Hmm, let's see. What kind of pants do we want to give him? Let's give him long flare pants. Okay. And of course it lets you pick your resolution that you want to use for it and you can browse for texture if you've already made it. Go ahead and click next and next up is his shoes. What kind of shoes do we want to give him? Loafers, hiking boots, flip flops, bunny slippers. Well in this case we'll give him loafers. And of course you can set the texture size and browse for a texture if you'd wish. Then go ahead and click finish. Okay here's our guy. And notice I am just click and just gently pulling to get him to rotate. And we already see the wireframe texture on him. Okay? Which is pretty easy stuff. So as he we're looking at how the wireframe is stretching on the model, this is a great time after you create a wireframe and know what your guy is going to want to look like. We want to look at the wireframe. We want to look at where are the diagonal lines because the diagonal lines are of course going to pull. Where are the straight lines? The straight lines like the ones straight down the middle of the back. Okay, those little things. These, these are the things we look for when we first get into the model. Of course, if we want to zoom in, we roll our uh, our mouse wheel, or we, of course, do a plus or a minus on our keyboard for zoom in, zoom out, or we can use the menus for view, zoom in, or zoom out. And if we want to reset our view, of course, it's Q. Okay, so we've got our guy, and he's in his wireframe. Now it's all a matter of texturing him. So let's go into the item menu. Let's of course first start with his hairstyle. Now we know that it's a fedora hat. His texture for the fedora hat right now is just the wire frame. So to save it what we would do is click save as then go into our uh, folder wherever we're doing it like I have one that's called my designs and so if I want to I can make a new folder 
title it Fedora Hats. Or if you're creating this outfit as a one-off, like I do a lot of just a, a set of one particular type of clothing, we can give it a, another name. So in this case, we would do, um, let's call this our Sharp Dressed Man. Okay, and go ahead and hit enter and create that. Then, of course, go into our and um, go into our folder for this particular project. Click on the new folder icon again, and we would do fedora hat. All right, hit enter. Double click on that. Then we're going to save the wireframe. Okay, so we would put fedora wireframe, and so it'll save it as a JPEG. Okay, and then we click save. Okay, it tells us this design pattern has been saved as, and it gives us the entire uh, string for where it's saved at. Then it says you can edit this texture in any paint program to create a custom design pattern. Load, load it on to this model by clicking on the browse button. So if we, we had already made our hat, we could click on browse and put it in. Then we have our details tab, and we can do wireframe, save as, it'll do the same thing. Okay, so we have two ways to skin this proverbial cat already. We can save our wireframe in this way and click Save. Wireframe has been saved as. So you can do it one of two ways. You can save it under the Texture tab as a Save As or you can do under the Details tab as a Wireframe Save As. Inside also, if, you've done, if you're really not feeling, you know, um, ambitious, with your um, paint program like Photoshop or Paint Shop Pro, what we need to do is click on basic. And what it's going to do is it's going to give it already a basic pattern on the hat. And then what we can do is come in and these little boxes right here, these are the colors you are going to select for certain parts of that model. So hmm, let's put him in a brown hat. Why not? So I would choose a brown. Um, let's go with a, hmm, well, these browns I don't like, so I'm going to make my own over here. Okay, and then I'm going to click OK. Then I'll click another one, and let's make his hat band hmm, more of the red color. And click OK. And notice these colors are getting saved right here on the palette. We click again, and add in one more color. Let's go with that one. Okay, and what we can do is hit Apply. Now what Apply is going to do, it's already going to color the hat. And if you can't see the hat very well, we can go to View, Background, Set Color. We can go to a darker color, so that way we can see our hat a little bit better. So we already know he has a brown fedora on. And he's got black hair. And he's all square and ready to go with his hat. Okay, next up, and then we can click OK. And we're all done with the hairstyle. Okay. But uh, we're going to get into opening up these wireframes on the mo uh, in uh, our paint program in just a little bit. But first, we're going to go through this just to cover the basics of Style Maker. Okay, now next up, we have we go to Item and then to Glasses, and of course, we can save our texture either under the Texture or the Details tab, and you can wireframe, save as, and then we go up and we, we are already in our folder for our sharp dressed man. We go ahead and click it and we would do oh, glasses. Okay, and then we would just put Neo wireframe. Okay, and hit save and it'll tell us our wireframe has been saved as in, in our folder and you click OK. Now for the texture, if you don't want to do that, you can go to, ba if you don't want to paint it yourself, Go to basic and what it's going to do, you just pick out your colors. And since he is dressed like that, let's go ahead and put a pair of brown glasses on him, which I don't think that's going to hurt much. Oh, and you can already see here on our, in our little bitty texture, what it's going to look like. And that doesn't look too good. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we've got a little bit darker color and then we can come in here and give it our red color that we liked earlier and then of course we can come back and do maybe a white okay so his glasses if we applied that would look like this so he's already he's already got a styling set of shades on okay if you don't like that 
go back, change your colors. Nothing's wrong with that. Click OK. Hit apply. And there we go. Now he's looking he's looking vaguely styling, but we can come back and change the color if we want to put a pair of gold glasses on him, maybe. Let's try that instead. Hmm. No, not quite. But if we want to just go and say we want to do a gray. Let's try that. Okay, so he's 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 looking pretty good. We can zoom in on him and see that his glasses have already come out pretty good. His hat's on. Okay, he's he's vaguely styling. But you know what? I'm still not crazy about that color on his glasses. Let's try that and apply. Hmm. Still not quite right. Hmm. What do we want to do about that? Let's try that. Well, now his, sh his shades are a little bit more gold. So just play with those little buttons, and you can find a neat way to paint a pair of Neo glasses very quickly and easily. But of course, if we want to, we'll go back inside of Style, uh, we'll go inside of our paint program, and we'll paint it differently and click OK. Now, next up in our items menu is his head. Now, we can't do anything with his head, really, because this, and it says down at the bottom of the dialog, that note that this design is for reference only and cannot be submitted. If we wanted to, we could go through and pick his eye color. We have patterns that are, of course, it can only be 64 by 64. If, you know, we have a browse, just in case we want to browse for a texture. But we have set eye colors. And me, personally, I'm a little bit, you know, I tend to lean toward green-eyed guys and hit apply. Now in our details tab we cannot save or do anything with the head. So go ahead and if our mesh, if we did none, it wouldn't have a head, remember? But if we hit standard it will go ahead and give us a, a sample head to work with and of course we would choose his eye color. Click and click OK. Now next up on our item is his top. Okay, we've already got a casual jacket on. We've got our texture here. Now we can save it from here, or where can we go? The Details tab. We also can choose the resolution again. We had that in the, the wizard, but we can also do it manually here. Now what we can do is just choose our uh, 512 by 256 texture, go to our Details, Wireframe, Save As, and then we go and we click and give ourselves a new folder. Remember, a, an organized developer is a happy developer. If you are not organized, you're gonna lose stuff. So make sure that you are being orderly. You don't have to do what I do, but I highly suggest it because you know you have to stay organized. If you don't, then you're gonna run into trouble and we really, really don't want that. Okay, so this is our casual jacket. Okay, and then we click it and then double click and then name it and then do the casual jacket wireframe and then hit save and then it's going to save it for us and tell us that it's been saved under our sharp dressed man folder our casual jacket and the casual jacket wireframe and click OK. Now what we can do with the texture is we can go through and we can tell it okay give him a basic texture and we're going to go ahead and apply that and look he's already looking pretty spiffy Okay, we can move him over a little bit so we can see what he's doing. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Now, when we go through here, we already noticed that, okay, our first one, that's our base color. So let's go ahead. And since he is wearing a, <clears throat> a brown hat, let's go ahead and, and do the same with his jacket. And let's hit apply. Okay, that's our first one. The second one, let's go ahead instead of the gray, let's give it a little bit different hue. And then for the third piece, that would be his shirt. And I'm going to put him in a little soft pastel yellow shirt. Let's hit apply. Okay, so our guy is doing pretty good so far. Okay, he's in his fedora. He's got a striped jacket on. That yellow is not too handsome. So let's go ahead and change that up a little bit. Let's give him a, hmm, what would go well with that? You know, that's the hardest thing when you're when you're just doing this from StyleMaker because you never know quite what you're going to get. Hey, that's not bad. He looks kind of handsome already. Okay, so that way we would go okay. Now, we've done our jacket. 
Now this is, guys, remember, we haven't gone into our paint program yet. This is just off of what Style Maker gives us. So he's already looking kind of spiffy in his little shirt. Okay, it has got a lot of buttons there. I'll hit Q to get him back to where we want to. Move him over to the side because now we're going to go back into our item menu. We're going to go to bottoms. And of course we have long flare pants already. Let's go to our texture. And of course we can do the same thing. You know, we have our choice of resolutions. And of course we can save our trousers. Go ahead and save those. And click your new thing and we'll go uh, pants. And then we will do that. And what kind of pants are we working with? We are working with the long flare pants. So we can go flare pants wireframe. And there's a reason why we're saving these all with the name wireframe in them because we want to know where to start from. Because once you save these wireframes, you can come back and use them again and again and again if you are organized. So, okay, so we've already put our wireframe. Now we can give it a basic texture if we'd like. Click apply just so we can see what we've done. Okay, let's go ahead, give him a pair of dark brown pants. Okay, and we'll hit apply. See what that does for it? Ooh, that's not a very nice color, is it? Mm -mm. Let's go back in here. Let's, let's, let's equal those colors out. Let's see what it does. Oh my goodness, his pants turned red. <laughs> okay, and then we'll hit apply. See what that does. Okay, we've put a very bright red pair of pants on him. That's no good. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to figure out where we went wrong with our coloring. Okay, let's do that. And as you can see, as you work with these, you know, you're going to have to figure out what colors you want to go where. Let's try that. Okay, now he's getting into the right color range. Let's try that again. There we go. Now he's looking better. Yeah. And they're not the exact right color, but by playing with those little tabs, you'll find that, you know, there are, there's a lot of stuff that you can do right there. Okay, and of course our details. And, and get this, it says the pattern is wrapped around the model. Okay, there are details for each one. Now let's go back, okay, since we've already done our thing with this, or click OK, we'll go back and let's look what it says about the top. In the casual jacket it says details. Okay, it doesn't give us any details, okay, but it does when it comes to the pants. So make sure to check your details tab because sometimes it'll give you notes about it, sometimes it won't. Okay, then let's finish up his shoes. Okay. We'll go to item, go to shoes, and there are his loafers, and we can choose a basic texture, okay? And then we can just pick the different colors we want for that. And I've stayed all in the same area of color. So we'll go in here, we'll see what we did. And of course you can look and see what you've done on your wireframe, uh, up in your texture. Hmm, that's a little too bright of a color. Let's go with that. Uh, still too bright. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Let's apply it. Let's see what we did. Okay, and he's got a pair of loafers on. They're not the best in the world, but this is just from what we do here in StyleMaker. Okay, now if we want to, our wireframe, if we messed up and forgot to save, like I did, go back, choose your wireframe, go back and reset your colors. because I always goof like this. Okay, I'm going to hit apply. Oops, what did I do wrong? There we go. There we go. Now let's go ahead and details, wireframe, save as, and then we'll go to shoes. Okay, then, and then we do a loafer wireframe. and then hit save. It saves it for us. Okay, go back to our texture and then we can texture it any way we'd like. Like right now, he's got on little white soles and white laces on his shoes, but we can go through, change those colors to anything we'd like. But this is just using the basic StyleMaker interface. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, so now he's got on some 
dark colored loafers. He doesn't look too bad. Okay, and click OK. Now, with each of the textures that we did, okay, to look at our guy, he's he's kind of long. If we want to see what kind of skin tone he, uh, what he looks like with different skin tone, like right now he's caramel. But if I want to change him to latte, he'll of course change over to latte, or he'll change over to espresso. You know, you just choose it. You just pick it, and it'll apply it. All right, this this program has become extremely intuitive. Now, before we could go ahead and, of course, pick our colors in Style Maker, but um, what we couldn't do really is, well, we could look at it on the fly, but we couldn't see it as the entire outfit. So, okay, so we've gone through and done all that. Now, if we have custom textures that we wanted to apply to our model, we could go in here and just click Browse. And what it would do, it would ask us for our uh, for the hairstyle. Oops, I went up one too many. Uh, where's our sharp dress man? There he is. Okay, we go through, and in our wireframe, if we look at the thumbnail, we'll see the wireframe. Okay, and this I'm going to cancel. But we can load up the entire outfit right here from the custom textures. Okay, it's Control T, and it's right here in the item menu, custom textures. Okay, now. If we want to look, know what this guy is going to do when he gets into world and he's, you know, doing the twist, well, we can click on our pose tab and guess what? We can see what he's going to look like doing the twist. What's going to happen to the stripes on his jacket? All kinds of fun stuff. So we can kind of see what's already going on on the model just by posing it. Okay, so, but say, take it for example, if we did all this and we wanted to see what it looked like, what we could do is we could save our texture. Okay, if we do that, let's go to the fedora hat. And what we can do is we can call it painted fedora hat. Okay, and it'll save it. Okay, and what we do is click OK because I'm only going to use that one as an example. If you've already textured it, just go into the specific area. Go to your texture, go to save as. With your details, you know, it'll save the wireframe still. Okay, just go ahead, click OK. Okay, now, welcome to Photoshop. Okay, when we get into Photoshop, let's go to File and then Open. And then I'll navigate my way. As you can see, guys, I've got a lot of stuff going on on my desktop. Okay, then we go to, into our folder, and we find our Sharp Dressed Man. There he is. Okay, and let's get out both renditions of the fedora. As they open up, what are we going to see? First thing we see is, of course, how they look painted. Now, let's go ahead and widen these out. So I want you to be able to see this. Okay, what it's done, it's already textured this. Now, what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm going to do some adjustments. That way you guys can see what exactly is going on and what, how they've textured this model. Okay, so what we're seeing is that we have the hat band, the bottom of the hat, and the top of the hat. Oh, well, I'm sorry, that's probably the brim. This is the top of the hat. When you're dissecting wireframes that are made in StyleMaker, what you're going to want to look for are the different types of bends. Like, notice that when we first opened up our hat, and what I'm going to do is come back and go to Item, Hairstyle, Textures, and then what I'm going to do is go back to the wireframe, hit Apply. Yep, so now we can look at the hat. Now let's look close up. Okay, now what we see is there's all kinds of foo foo and rah rah, lots and lots and lots of polygons that are going on on his hat. Okay, we already know there's lots and lots of polys going on on his hat. So when we go back into Photoshop, what are we looking for? We're looking for all this foo foo and rah rah right here on the right hand side. That's the brim of his hat. Then if we look at the top area, okay, what do we see when we turn him on his head? we see those exact same lines and figures that we did right here on the wire frame. Okay, that's dissecting the model and of course we have the hat brim uh, that's up in the top left hand corner. Whenever you are working with a new wire frame, oh and by the way this little white dot right there 
that would be his hair. Now, before you go, what? That's one pixel. Yes, I know, it's one pixel. That's because simply that one pixel covers his entire hair. I know, don't ask, it's how it's mapped, okay? I am not the complaint department, go talk to there. <laughs> Because that is a little bit of something that a lot of people don't realize when they're making hairstyles. That that one little bit of pixel, that would be the color of their hair. So, let's go ahead and let's do something interesting with our wireframe. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that pre-made pre one and tell it no. First thing we do when we work with any type of wireframe is what we want to do is we want to go ahead and block it. So, go ahead and start with a layer. And what you're going to do is come in here with your um, with your rectangular marquee, or for this, actually for the uh, fedora hat, it would be wiser to take a uh, both a rectangular and a, an elliptical. I'm going to start with the elliptical. I'm going to hold my shift key down, find the center of the hat here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, oops, hello, is it the control key? Uh, I can't ever remember. Okay, I'm going to constrain it to a circle by holding down my shift key. Then I'm just going to pull open a uh, elliptical marquee, release it, and then I'm going to pick a color here from my palette, and I'm going to go ahead and fill it. Come on, thing, fill. Oh, my goodness. Okay, there we go. Oops, there we go. There's our nice blue. Deselect it, come through with another one. And what we do? Do the same thing again. There we go. It's the Alt key. If you get to the center, and then pull straight out. What it's going to do is it's going to uh, increase in size from the center. And then go ahead and release it. You're on a new layer. Go ahead. Pick another color. And pick colors that are diametrically opposed. Because this is what is called blocking the wire frame. Okay? When we block, what we're going to do is look at where everything is on the model. Now, I'm actually going to divide the hat brim in half. Because I want you guys to see left hand side, right hand side. Okay, let's pick another color. Let's pick a green. And notice I am picking colors that are completely clashing. Because there is a certain point where you have to say, hey, you know what? I want to see where all these different parts are on my model. Okay, what we're going to do, come in here, pick a pink. There we go. And when I'm blocking, what I can even do, instead of what I did with these two, let's go ahead and... and chuck these guys into the trash because I'm going to do it in a different manner. Uh, let's go back to the elliptical marquee. A new layer. Hold down our alt key. Find the center. Pull out. There we go. There's our perfect circle. That's brought out from the center. Okay, if I want to move it, hold down that space bar. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take half of that. So I'll come in with my polygonal lasso. And what I'm going to do is uh, hold down my Alt key again. Then I'm going to click right at the center line. Click again. Just come around. Finish it. And that's going to do only half of my hat. So I'll come in here. Color. Go ahead and fill it. Oops. Wrong color. There we go. And deselect. Now what I can do is actually, let's not deselect. What we're going to do is take that. And we'll go to select and then transform selection. And what we'll do, right click and then flip horizontal. Okay. And actually, what we'll have to do <laughs> is rotate it and then move it. Okay. So that'll get our, uh, our selection where we want it to go. Hit enter. Okay. So let's make another layer and let's pick an orange. Okay. So I've blocked the hat, and notice I have a little spot that's missing. You know, go ahead and block this however you want to. I just want to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, blocking this so I can see exactly what's going on. If you want to block it in a different manner, what you can do is actually take selections of each of the uh, spindles here on the hat base. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and take a color, and then I've already chosen a green. Let's go with a red. And actually, what you can do is just take a rectangular marquee, divide it in half, okay, then do that, come through with another one, 
and that's going to be difficult to do so what we'll do is do a elliptical marquee go. We'll fill in our hat. We'll do something a little different. We'll come back and erase the portion of it. Okay, then let's pick a... Hmm, let's just pick a medium gray. Alright, now go ahead, hold down your control key, click on layer, uh, the layer that has the side of your hat. You're still uh, got uh, your layer with the uh, gray circle selected. Hit delete, clear that out. Okay, now the last piece we want to do is hair. Okay, and that little guy, I'm just going to cover it up with a nice big blotch of, hmm, what color should his hair be? Uh, let's use a, let's use a lavender. Why not? He'll be bizarre looking, but oh well. Okay, I'm just doing alt backspace for my foreground fills. Okay, deselect. Alright, now let's do a file. Save as the fedora hat. This time we're going to change it over to the name and you're going to save twice. Remember we always save twice in Photoshop. This is the fedora blocking. Okay, we hit save and we hit OK. Then we hit file, save as. Then we're going to come through, save it as a PNG and then it'll say fedora blocking copy. You say save that. Okay, and then we hit OK we don't want to interlace it. Come back into Style Maker. Now we're going to Browse, okay? And we're going to do the Fedora blocking. We're going to open it up and you're going to see our texture that we just made. We're going to apply it. Okay, we blocked our Fedora. We now see what's going on. The pink area, ah! One half is the front of the hat. One half is the back of the hat. Now notice what we're looking at when we look at the blocking of our texture versus the blocking of our wireframe. Now when we see it on the model it's something completely different. Hang on, I'm going to pose him as idle. There we go. So we can just look at his hat and if you want to you can take everything out. Uh, you know, hit none for everything else and just work with the hat if you want to. Me personally I like to know what it's going to look on the guy. Okay, so we have already go out, gone ahead and blocked our wireframe so we know where everything is at. Notice that we blocked it straight up and down here on our wireframe. Now if you want to see where everything is, what you would do, lower your opacities. Okay, come in, lower the opacity on your layers. And then what you can do is come back, save again, and then we'll look at everything again. So let's do a file save as and we'll do the uh, we'll come through and we'll do fedora blocking too. You don't have to save your PSD every single time. I like to because I never know when I'm gonna mess up and want to go back and maybe I don't have enough history states. So we go to PNG and we click save. Okay. Okay now let's browse. Let's pick up our new piece. Okay, what we're going to do is hit apply. Alright, so now we've got a really good view of the wireframe and what it looks like when it's all blocked. Okay, now our little white square that we had, okay, <laughs> that we colored in lavender, that's his entire head. Look at that guys. Look here in Photoshop. That area right there that's his hair. Hang on, I'm going to zoom in. Right there, that's his hair. You see that one little bitty pixel? That's his hair. So, <laughs> when you're working with a wireframe, always remember that not everything is as it seems. Okay, when we look at the hat, now notice that there's that vertical line going straight down the center. That's That's got to be, and look at, there's one, there's, there's two, at, you know, perfectly straight lines one going one way, one going another. If you wanted to, you could actually block these quadrants and find out exactly where on the hat it is. So let's go ahead and let's block those real quick. I'm just going to take a polygonal lasso. I'm just doing this on the fly guys, you know, so I don't want to confuse you but I want you to make sure that you are comfortable with Style Maker because you know what, this new version that Chaz has made us is just absolutely stupendous. I mean, I am so very, 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 very impressed with it. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and block that so we can see it. 
Okay. And I didn't get it all in. Notice there's some there's some little pieces missing. But when you're blocking, neatness is not the absolute <laughs> virtue you're going for. You want to be able to see what it is that you're making. That's the whole point of blocking. Okay, let's do it on this side. Just on the fly. Just real quick. Okay. Let's do another one. Let's go that bright magenta. Oh, oh man, that color's just almost offensive. Okay. <laughs> Deselect, and then we'll go File, Save As. We'll save again. We'll go ahead and save it as a PNG. And we'll go ahead and save that as the same name because I want you to guys to see one neat thing, and that is R for Reload. Okay, so now we've blocked the quadrants of our hat. So now we know that these pieces that we're working with right here on the top of the hat, okay, that we can see that these four quadrants, if he is facing forward, let's face him forward and let's bend him forward like this, and then zoom in. We can even bring him up a little bit. Remember, how I'm moving around the model, hold down your right mouse key and then just drag. Okay, that's how you move it around. For zooming in, zooming out, I'm using the mouse wheel. Okay, so we see the four quadrants of our hat. Let's go back to Photoshop. And we can see, let's minimum, oh, hello. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. There we go. Okay, now let's pull that out of the way so we can see the blocking next to the hat. Okay, so we can see that our quadrant right here is on the back right corner of his hat. We notice that the, the magenta section is the right front quadrant of the hat. You know, and then we have, of course, the brown and the yellow, which is, of course, the other quadrants. So we already know how this wireframe works. This is really the diagnosis of your wireframe and really dissecting it and making sure you know what parts you're painting. Because you, a lot of people make the mistake that they think, oh, I can slap a texture on a wireframe. I'm a designer. Mm -mm. There's more to design than just slapping paint on a wireframe. In a lot of cases, there's a lot of skill involved. There is a lot of, okay, how am I going to texture this? Okay, how do, how do I exactly break this model apart so that way I can see what I'm doing? Okay, so really when you start with any type of wireframe, start by blocking. Because blocking is the biggest and best favor you can do for yourself. Then when you load it up on StyleMaker, just go to item and then to your item then go to texture on the tech uh, in the dialog go to the texture tab browse for your texture then hit ok to load it up if we want to we can clear it okay and we can go back to just our wireframe okay and then we'll just take these back to black okay and hit apply and we can go back to how the wireframe looks again but if we want to go back, see our blocking, open it up, and hit OK. And we see our blocking. Now, I am not going to sit here and preach to you about how to make a texture. That is up to you. That is up to your imagination. You know, that's not my job is to teach you exactly how to create a texture because we've gone through the blocking. The blocking is the most important thing you can do. Then you have an idea of exactly how the model works and how you're going to paint it. Okay, now when we look at this guy, we can see underneath his hat, oh, that was not meant to be an obscene or bizarre view, I'm just looking at the underside of his hat. Okay, when we look at the underside, we see all kinds of stuff going on. Look at your blocking, compare it to your wireframe, so that way you know what you're doing. Okay, and you'll notice that we have the outer rim that is the outer edge and if we want to have proof of that let's do this let's come in a circle okay let's hold I like I like perfect circles I'm just crazy like that okay there we go let's add in a new portion of our blocking let's go with a color we haven't used yet let's go with that really super super bright blue there we go then we'll take down the opacity okay now Let's go ahead and save again. Because we want to be able to see through all this stuff. 
And always save as a PNG, of course. There we go. Hit save. Okay. Now let's go back. And then item. Let's go to hairstyle. There's our fedora hat. Let's load up the texture. Browse. There we go. Fedora blocking three. Apply it. Okay. Now, you know that blue part we were wondering where that went? Look at that is the inside edge of his hat. Now let's find out what's going on with that. Oop, let's uh, tip him forward. Okay, you're going to notice, aha, look at that. The, that piece that's on the inside. Look what's happening. Now, oops, hello, we got a good view of the inside of his head. Gee, and everybody wondered why I was so transparent. It's my avatar. Okay, <laughs> you notice that some of that blue bleeds out. We also have it. Excuse me. Underneath, that's the shadow on the inside of his hat. That the part that pulls away from his head. Kind of cool, huh? This is the little details you get out of blocking. Okay? Blocking is very important. I can't stress it enough. Anyway, okay. So, we have gone through. And we have loaded up a model. Yep, we created a new model inside of style maker by going to file new and we went to the wizard but if we want to go back and change a specific item like his top maybe we don't like the casual jacket on him let's put a dress shirt on him and hit apply okay it's going to take us back to a wireframe okay if you want to do the dress shirt do the exact same thing okay let's go ahead and save the wireframe okay let's wireframe save as and what we'll do is create even a new folder, and that would be dress shirt. There we go. And then, of course, dress shirt wireframe. Hit save. It'll tell us where it saved it. We click OK. Now, come into Photoshop, do a file open. Okay, go up, go to your dress shirt, go to your dress shirt wireframe, open up. Okay, now we finished with the hat. Let's go to the dress shirt. Look at this guy. Wow. Now this is a lot of stuff. Now I always highly suggest that you get in, when you get in and you're working with your wireframe, blow it up. <laughs> you know, move it around. You know, be able to look at it. Because if you don't, it's, it's so hard to design if you can't see what all you're doing. I'm just going to tell you guys that from the get-go. You have to see what you're doing and where you're going. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to make my window really big. Because I like to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to hit a Control-0 in Photoshop. That way I can blow it up. It's like an 184% right now. So it's pretty big. And look at all these lines. Now let's go back to StyleMaker. What we can do is close that, that down a little bit. That's the beautiful thing about StyleMaker now. You can resize it. The uh, interface is resizable. So let's go ahead, and if we resize again, we can kind of look at Photoshop and and our guy at the same time. When I zoom in, we can and find out what's going on. Okay, already look at that V patterning right here. This V patterning right here is the same as this right up here. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's start blocking, and this time I'm going to take a a uh, polygonal lasso in Photoshop and then I'm gonna just pull out this portion right here and I know you guys can't see my line that I'm making right now but you will in a second okay thank you okay now I just make abstract shapes just to start off with and let's go in let's go with blue okay now as we start our blocking process, it's important to realize that, hey, you are discovering what this model is made out of. Because discovering your model is half the fun of design. Let's go through. And let's just start blocking. And as you block, just keep adding those new layers. okay, And then just keep filling them in. And already we're going to start to see, and you know, you can get as technical with your blocking as you'd like. 
there is no rules when you block it is you are discovering where everything is on your wireframe okay what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and oh dear okay as we do these let's just tap down our opacities because we want to see where all where where you know where everything's at and we're just doing these for color because it's basically like code, color coding your wireframe. Okay. All right. So we, you know, we did this a little bit earlier. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I just want you guys to be able to see everything. Let's do a file, save as, and then of course this would be your dress shirt blocking. And once you've blocked a wireframe, once you've blocked it, what you're going to do is you're going to know where you're going. This is your roadmap. You can always go back to your blocking. You know, when you uh, go through and uh, do your uh, piece of clothing, what you're going to want to do is probably keep your blocking open, but then open your wireframe again. That's why we saved the PSD, so that way it's saved as a different file name. So when we open up our wireframe again, we're able to have the blocking sitting right next to the working wireframe that you're working on. Okay, we'll do a file, save as and then save it as a PNG and then hit save click OK now we're going to go to item top texture browse and we'll go to our blocking and click OK and then oops sorry <laughs> I've got uh, <laughs> preview remove it all around I mean uh, style maker whoops <laughs> wrong app there we go okay so what do we have here Let's do our guy. And we notice already that, ah, we found the right back corner of the shirt. We found our two cuffs. Okay. We found our cuffs already. So let's go ahead and make him small again. And blocking is probably the most, the biggest favor you can do for yourself. Let's change this because you know what? I'm not crazy about that green. Let's change it over and maybe turn it into a yellow. Yellow is good to see. Yellow is very easy to see. Okay, we'll save again. Save as PNG. Do our blocking. Yes, I want to save over it. Ugh. Okay, then we hit a reload. There we go. Now we can see it a little bit better. Okay, the pieces that I blocked here on my wireframe you can see that the V here in the front that's the front of his shirt okay the patch that I've done in the back that's the right uh, the right back portion of his shirt and of course these two pieces are the individual cuffs okay the right and the left so you can actually do different colors when you go through and do this just you know one step at a time layers 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 I cannot stress it enough a happy designer is one that is designed with layers. Layers gives you movability. It gives you, it, sorry, not movability, but mobility. It gives you the ability to say, I don't, I'm not sure if I like that there. If I've made wrinkles using maybe bevel and emboss or, or with, um, uh, say, uh, the black and white method. Okay, if we do that, we can pull those, move them out of the way. Layers, layers, layers cannot stress it enough. Okay guys, this wraps it up for your tutorial on uh, StyleMaker 5.2. As we have noticed, I went a little bit further than just the tutorial for the uh, interface itself. We went through it and we blocked our model. So we we blocked our, t our wireframe so that way we could see what we were designing and where we were designing. Next week, we'll cover more stuff. Uh, for the University of Their 3D Design Department, this has been Sherry. Take care.